Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, guys. Uh, my name is Dan, and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Cytos Heroes, and I welcome all of you guys at today's Cytos Sessions. It's been a while since we've done the last one, so um, it's great to have another one with a lot of great updates and uh, a lot of features that I want to share with you today, guys. Um, since we had a last session, uh, there will be a lot of developments happening behind the scenes. As many of you are aware of, um, we are changing many things and products within the Cytos ecosystem. So uh, by, by saying changes, uh, I actually mean the products are getting reworked uh, and remastered uh, to make them even more addictive. Um, so Xana is one of them. We have Tembazar, we have um, uh, Butler, Needham uh, 2.0, we have a module economy, which is currently in a massive production phase right now. We have uh, R&D department, which is working uh, and uh, trying to deliver some exciting products for you in Telegram as well as uh, browser. And we also have another product that I will be um, talking today. Basically, uh, we're going to get started today. I uh, uh, want to remind you guys that Cytos is, a, is an extensive ecosystem. It's made of different products, different game studios with different teams behind it, but they're all a part of the Cytos Heroes ecosystem. So Cytos Heroes is a game publisher and it's designed and designated to um, you know, deliver high quality products uh, at the web free space and uh, bring an innovative approach towards um, game execution. So. Uh, when we develop the game, uh, we don't just try to copy paste existing concepts from the games out there, but we actually try to build something new from scratch. And that's how, you know, we have products like Xena that appeared in our ecosystem. That's how we have, you know, Tempazar that is going to be available um, soon in the new version. That's how the Butler has appeared as well and browser. And that's how all the other products are appearing within the Cytos ecosystem. The process is not the easiest one, of course, as you would imagine, uh, to create something from scratch. Uh, it's it's always a complex technological challenge, but uh, we will get there. Like uh, we're fully a uh, capable team and uh, we are ready for the challenge. So we've been doing it for a while and we are, we are continuing it on. Xeni is the first product that we will be discussing today with you. There are a lot of updates. And I will quickly share now a little video that you can watch that is uh, a good summary about the gameplay of Xena with certain changes that we have implemented within it. So while you're watching, I'll be giving you a bit of a feedback. So team is currently working, Xena team is currently working and, and uh, trying to uh, implement new features that we call active skills, right? So we had passive skills before, and now we have active skills. And active skills are designed to make your game experience much more intense. Um, so because it's a battle royale, real-time strategy, we want to make sure that you are constantly getting engaged within this game mechanic that we have inside of Xena, and uh, you never get tired. So there is always something going on. You have to strategize your moves. You have to strategize skills that you are picking and uh, e executing at the battlefield. So um, active skills will be very handy for you now. And uh, while you're watching this video, you will be seeing some interesting visuals that are coming from these active skills once you press on them. So there are a lot of them uh, and we'll be talking a little bit about it uh, throughout this presentation as well. So you ready for all of these uh, little improvements that we're putting into Xena. We have conducted a Xena alpha testing um, that was available for 64 unique players that have applied and uh, had a chance to get into it. And uh, during this testing period, we had 214 games that were played by these 64 unique users. The general conclusion from the team was, according to the survey uh, results, the new version of the game evoked a variety of emotions and opinions among participants. Most respondents uh, positively assessed the innovations that we've implemented into Xena. Also, there were also um, some aspects noted that uh, are required to uh, further be developed. Uh, what has been done well? Well, few things that has been done well uh, from the player's opinion. Uh, there was uh, interesting phases of the match. Uh, participants showed interest in different phases of the match, especially the beginning and the middle. Ease of using abilities. So most players uh, did not experience difficulties in using abilities. Also, also um, some noted their complexity. A variety of gameplay. Uh, the game is now not only about robots, but also about abilities. Interface. The interface for active abilities was rated as convenient or sufficiently convenient. That's an overall feedback as well. 
new elements. Players like the idea of player zones and the central tower. What needs to be further developed? A few things. Variety in ability of execution. Participants expressed a desire to see more unique uh, abilities and different methods of their application. Uh, diversity of maps. Uh, it was suggested to vary um, the number of players on maps not only four or ten, but also intermediate options. Uh, new structures. Some players had difficulties understanding new structures, such as uh, the power station for additional energy generation. Lots of tactics, little strategies. Several players noted that it is difficult to devise a strategy due to uh, the ability to apply to uh, have these active skills anywhere. Randomness. Sometimes randomness decides the outcome of the game, which devaluates individual skills of the players as well. From the team particularly, the feedback is that we've received many valuable reviews that will help us to improve the game, obviously. Participants express the desire to see much more uh, unique abilities and different methods of their application. Uh, the balance of current abilities requires careful analysis to eliminate overpowered and useless abilities. Interface optimization is also a priority to enhance usability. Uh, introducing maps of variety numbers of players will help prevent a quick loss of interest. And we are grateful to all the testing participants uh, for their contributions and hope they will continue to play and enjoy Xena. Right, this is a feedback directly from the game producer. I'm just reading it to you. so. Um, you understand that uh, the whole review and the feedback, feedback was collected, assessed by the game producer. Here we go. We've got a bit of a, a summary from his side as well. And we go to the next slide, which kind of shows us uh, how the new uh, active abilities look like. So uh, we have top five abilities according to the number of users, based on the number of plays that were done by these uh, 64 players. And then we have top five abilities according to the highest victory rate, right? So um, you can see them on the screen. So there are, you know, skills like ice rockets and arson and hacks and gravity trap and, and barrage fire. Um, so these new abilities really make a big difference. We will, for example, demonstrate now to you uh, the video of uh, a skill like Napalm, uh, which is uh, demonstrating you how it actually works. So you can take the Napalm and you can place it on a certain area and it burns all the troops and uh, troops that are inside of the tower as well which affects the capacity of the, another player to collect the troops and attack another player, right? So it's a very effective and quite a quite an amazing visual effect uh, from the skill. The ice rocket is another one, which is pretty cool. Uh, if you watch the video right now, you can see how the ice rocket is actually used and uh, it does uh, have an effective impact on the ability to win. For example, a hack is another one that is uh, commonly used by the players during this alpha. Um, so you can watch the video how it actually looks. So these active skills are quite amazing and uh, they're making a huge difference into the gameplay of uh, Xana in general. You can now watch the videos of the abilities that are uh, having uh, highest victory rate. So one of them is a smoke screen. You can see how people are placing smoke screen on the actual battlefield, which are pretty cool things to do. Uh, then you can see EMP skill. If you watch the video now, the EMP skill looks quite fascinating as well. Then we have power shield, looks an interesting skill as well to be used. Once again, all of these skills are strategical ones, right? So it's, it's a strategy game that makes you think. So when you think, you obviously have to make right decisions to win the the, the battle real mode. Nobody says it's easy, but that's the point of the strategy. You have to uh, constantly brainstorm yourself and, and try to use the right skills to uh, perform well. Barrage fire is another one uh, that you can watch on the video. So uh, that's a very good skill to use. All of these uh, videos that you watch will give you a very good idea as to how it actually looks. Many of you will actually give a give, get a chance to test them once we give it to the public because it was a closed alpha test. Only a small number of people were able to play it, but they felt the difference already, which is a great indication that we're moving into the right direction with Xena. And um, Xena is going to, you know, at this stage, it's not ready as yet, but once we will get to the final stage, we will be able to release this game and um, show it to you. And you can test it yourself. And I'm sure it will get to the stage when it will um, be adopted by the masses and uh, people will start finally liking Xena as they should eventually. What is in the development? Well, 
The development uh, it's currently taking place um, to enter the next phase of testing and the team is asked with answering uh, crucial questions such as why should we play Xena? Like what's the point of playing it? Having identified the game score, uh, the team is now ready to refine and expand it upon breaking it down into the distinct stage stages, right? So um, to, to this and we are going to introduce um, the captivating, we call it meta game mode, it's called territory capture, a feature that promises uh, to add depth and engagement to the gameplay. So huge things are cooking. You can see it on the screen. The map will be a big map and there will be a, a lot of action happening. So different uh, guilds, uh, developers, players will be fighting for the territory of uh, Xena and it will come with a lot of excitement, trust me. So we're continuing to work on improving our beloved game. As we know, uh, we love Xen and uh, we'll continue doing so. And we have made numerous enhancements since the last open beta test. So we've uh, enhanced the UX interface, we've added uh, four extra abilities, we changed the storm logic, we adjusted the balance of abilities, we implemented the airdrop system as well. What is coming basically, uh, late August, I'm oh, sorry, late July, early August, we'll have open beta test on the territory capture mode. So many of you can apply for it and test it. Then late August, we have extraction of metaverse resources for a modular economy and uh, reworking the current premium functionality. Later, uh, then we'll have a launch of Xena with an updated core gameplay. Now, with these AMA sessions, or we call them side sessions, we will try to, instead of giving you a long roadmap of what's going to happen, we are trying to make it a nice summary of the next few months. So every side session will come with these little roadmaps that will kind of give you an idea as to what's what to expect in July and August and, you know, whatever. And so it will give you a very, uh, you know, certain understanding as to what the progress is and, and what is going to happen next, which is good. I think it's making a big difference. Instead of making these long term plans, we will make it nice and short, but it kind of gives you a better idea as to what to expect. Okay, so we've done with Xena. Hopefully you love that part and we are moving to Needum. So Needum is a big part of our ecosystem. It was the first product that was launched back in 2022. And we had a lot of excitement coming from players. People started to play it because it was a browser based game and there was something new in the market. There was nothing in the gaming space in the bad free space at that point of time of that particular level, which was a great acceptance by the crypto community. But obviously industry is changing now industry is going towards different trends and people especially game studios they must to select a particular industry where they will specialize and push uh, towards the mass adoption so needum is currently getting reworked okay we rethought the entire concept of needum and we realized that well first of all the game must be on the mobile it has to be a mobile game because not everyone is playing browser games these days not everyone uh, is excited to play uh, pc based games or laptop or uh, tablet people want to play mobile because the majority of people as we know in the third world uh, second world and first world countries 90 percent of them use mobile devices right uh, in asia it's android uh, in the western world it's more of an iphone but many of them play mobile games and i mean many of you played hamster combat or not coin recently and it's a simple tap game tap to earn right so uh, it just proves that it's a mass market and we should target this mass market massively. So Needum is going to take over this mass market adoption within the Telegram because we believe that Telegram and the growth of Ton Network, it's going to uh, be a mind-blowing journey. But what we're observing now is already an astonishing achievement by Ton Foundation that they were able to launch such applications as Notcoin, for example, and achieve, you know, 40 million users like, I mean, it just blows my mind. 40 million users is, is, is a larger number than some networks out there, like layer twos and layer ones. They, they don't even have that many users and players, whereas a simple uh, tap to earn application was capable to bring 40 million users. And many of these users act actually coming for the first time into the crypto space. So these guys, what they were able to do is they were able to find this unique source of traffic that was a big challenge for the Web3 space because many of us are creating games, but nobody wants to play it. Why? Because there is a no mass market adoption. So what Notcoin and Ton Foundation did, they've opened this massive source of traffic that now we can transfer towards our Web3 applications. 
And, and Nidum is definitely going to take an advantage of that. So what we've done with Nidum and what we're still doing is we've switched from horizontal to vertical layout. Uh, we've added simple bots. We created tool tips for abilities. We added a startup screen. We prepared a, a skill builder and implemented nine different skills. What I'm talking about right now is what's been done in the last one and a half months since we've done the previous session. And uh, yeah, there are a lot of improvements, a lot of exciting stuff coming up for a new doom. We will put the video for you now. The video is very simple. Please do not pay attention to visuals. This is not about visuals right now. It's not about graphics. It's all about the gameplay. So while you watch this video, I'll just give you an idea. First of all, Cyrus should stop making beautiful visuals and nice graphic. We should pay attention more about the mechanics, something that is highly addictive and there is a chance that it will be adopted by the mass market. So now the priority number one for us with the new game producer is to pay attention to the actual mechanics and the trends as well. Now we see Ton is doing extremely well. Telegram has a large number of users. So Needum is a perfect fit for Telegram if it has a capability to be open in Telegram application. And it's an access to the market which is requiring an accessible product. Like once again, not everyone can download a Black Desert because it, people in Myanmar, they don't have powerful devices to play Black Desert with 220 gigs of data, right? So what they do is they play mobile games, right? The, these mobile games are accessible. They don't mind to play it in the Telegram application. They don't mind to play it from the App Store or Google Play. So this is what Needum is eventually going to become. We are trying to put it all within the mobile itself. Our return-based game takes an innovative approach by allowing players to play their hero actions in advance, right? So while you watch this video, first of all, players will be able to select all the actions they want their uh, hero to perform, including movements, ability usage, and attacking specific cells and lines. Once the turn is concluded, the selected actions are executed in a sequence, creating a dynamic and visually engaging combat experience. This innovative approach deviates from the traditional step hit step hit mode, introducing an element of combinatorial action planning that deepens the gameplay itself. Once again, I'm just reading the statement that is coming directly from the game producer, just to give you a better idea as to how it actually works. The second video as well, you can watch um, and see how the our turn-based game works. So you can observe the actual development uh, process uh, and, and see how it's happening. So we finalized uh, in progress we still have to finalize the full combat flow, make the UI clearer and more responsive. We have to replace the technical visuals with those closer to the final version. We have to replace the character icons on the field with uh, proper characters from Cytus Heroes, implement a feature that limits the use of abilities to specific cells, right? So basically Butler 2.0, what's coming? It's uh, gonna come with a lot of exciting stuff. We will implement basic matchmaking to ensure that players connect to battles without arrows. We will launch the build through the Telegram boat, which you will be able to access. We will implement the authorization via Telegram as well. We will create a window and mechanics for rankings and tournaments. We will create a victory defeat window. We have ranking matchmaking system which is currently in progress as well character creation system experience gaining and character leveling system inventory and loot system item system that affects characters combat stats events and monetization mechanics the beautiful part about butler is that um it's going to be connected to the entire module economy of Cytus, right so you have a browser butler and you have a telegram based butler but it will all be connected so from one mobile, one mobile device you will be able to see all of your assets all resources tokens and many other things as well and we'll cover it as well later on so you will be able to see how it actually looks now once again we have a short roadmap here for mid-july slash mid-august what's going to happen is in july is we're going to finalize the full combat flow to make the ui clearer and more responsive as i've mentioned before you will be able to see many things in july and august and then you will be able to start testing it the good part about us now is that we are well structured we know what needs to be delivered we know what the market wants and we have a traffic that is coming from another uh, product that was recently launched by Cytus Heroes and Telegram Party, which we will be covering in today as well. Tembazar. Tembazar is a big project for us. Any shooter is a very expensive game development process. It's not the easiest process. It's not the cheapest process. It's a very big challenge. You've played many shooters out there like Shrapnel, Benzili is coming up, Neon Heroes and stuff like that. So Web3 is full of different shooters and we want to stand out in terms of the shooter with the product that you know has a uniqueness 
and something that is exclusive towards that particular shooter itself. So we thought a big success of Helldivers 2 and we thought, well, hey, actually, we think PvE concept, co-PvE concept, would be a great addition to Cytus ecosystem. And there are a few reasons. The lore book of Cytus is so fruitful and juicy that if we will implement such idea of this shooter into the Unreal Engine 5, and make it as per the book. And you can see the books behind me there. I'm a big fan of Cytus books. It will look so juicy and interesting that people will love it. Like I'm, I'm sure it's gonna look like an outstanding lore book design and concept. What was done already is that we have technology selection for implementation, which was Unreal Engine 5, version 5.4.2. We have concept development, concept development called PVE. We have creation and development of enemy concepts. We have a creation of playground, basic mechanics on uh, primitives to begin work on the gameplay component. What is in development right now is integration of EOS, working on the animation cycles of cyborgs, working on the artificial intelligence of enemies, repairing models and animations of enemies, implementation of development of unique gameplay mechanics. You can watch the video now. You can see there is a map. It's very, very real. Please do not pay attention to graphics or visuals right now. This is not important. It's all about mechanics. While you're watching this video, uh, you all have to understand we're working on the technical part of the project right now, the product itself. And uh, we want to make sure that everything is smooth when you start joining in and there are no glitches and bugs. Of course, there will be some, but we will try to minimize them and really enjoy the lore and the actual gameplay itself. So um, there will be a lot of interesting things for you now uh, you can uh, really enjoy the whole process the characters creation as well is a big thing for us because we're trying to create some crazy angry and ugly monsters and you know characters from Cytus Heroes ecosystem so when you will play this game you will really enjoy the lore book of Cytus what can you expect well in implementation of multiplayer the matchmaking system will be implemented integration of authorization services friends and chats creation of maps for the new concept development of AI development of gameplay mechanics weapons abilities and missions first MVP version by the end of September that's what we believe will happen by the end of September we will have this test version MVP version, sorry, that we will be able to show and even test with yourself, right? So once again, you can watch the video. It just shows the progress, how everything looks and the movements and maps and uh, characters creations and, uh, you know, structure of visuals and cyborgs and many other things as well. So the video is kind of giving an idea, which is cool to see as well. While you watch the video, once again, the short roadmap. Now, the first iteration of Playground on primitives, basic movements, basic shooting, dummy enemies, enemy spawn logic. July will be a Playground upgrades, movements, enhance, enhancement, adding various states, um, states, uh, stamina, interaction with surfaces, adding characters, animation states, development of weapons, and many other things as well. So you can watch the video as well, the movements of characters. It's a pretty complex thing, actually, with Cybergs. Uh, because we have such a sophisticated character made of elements and different parts, you really need to adopt it towards Unreal Engine 5 because Unreal Engine 5, surprisingly, is not capable to integrate certain characters and uh, files. So we have to adjust them properly ourselves, which takes time, of course. Yeah, so as you understand, we're not like a $100 million organization. We have, you know, not, be, not the biggest budget. So we do everything as to the best capacity we're capable to, right? So we're doing the best we can to deliver good products to you and get the the feedback from your side. So um, you can see the little roadmap, you can watch the videos now and uh, kind of gives you a good idea as to where it's heading off and uh, what's going to happen. Once again, it's good to have short roadmaps. Instead of going long term, we have this nicely concentrated information for you to look at. Module economy. Eh? The module economy is a big thing of Cytus and uh, obviously it's been doing its job. Like People um, love it and uh, it comes with a lot of interesting things. Basically, for those who don't know what the module economy is, it's basically you own the business within our ecosystem or metaverse. We consider businesses to be a particular service for example the service can be a production of the shipyard like oh, sorry production of the spaceships or the service can be a, a marketplace the service can be 
at a store, the service can be uh, the auction, right? Anything is considered to be a service uh, and you can own and co-own these particular services within our ecosystem. So you can go and play the game, earn a particular resource or asset, and then uh, contribute this asset into the module economy and in exchange get some reward points or ownership points, which will prove your ownership over a particular service. Simple idea, but it's uh, going to do over a long term, I believe it has a good potential to do well. So we've uh, had a, a, a apartment event recently, which did extremely well. We've sold out in eight seconds, uh, legendary cards and epics in a couple of hours. Commons took four days to sell. Thanks everyone for participating, obviously. Now, what is coming? Uh, many of you expect the Hero Upgrade Center, which will be a big part of our uh, module economy. The Hero Upgrade Center, this is where the demand for your um, Genesis cards and your Academy cards will be taking place into because the every NFT card comes with an upgrading ability that will give you some CDUS tokens. So you can watch the video as well, how it's actually work, how the heroes in the hack module works, how the upgrading works. You can watch the video as well while I'm actually talking. So we're for working the full capacity on the launch of the Hero Upgrade Center. We've made some modifications to the main screen. The Hero Rank Upgrade screen is in the near final version. Also, you might have noticed we're in the progress of redesigning the hero cards as well. That's a big part of our service that is coming up and will be available. Our artists are currently creating full portraits, but for now only for the layouts, only the layouts. Yes, inside of the Indium station, there will no longer be uniquely generated hero portraits on the cards. We had to take this step towards optimization and rapid development. The old system will remain for the Academy and Genesis collections to maintain the uniqueness of the hero cards when moving to chain in the future, right? So that's a big thing for our module economy. The Part of the module economy comes with Xena Station, which will be the next um, big thing for uh, Xena. And Xena will start having these contributions from your sites to own certain services within the Xena itself. First iteration of the station kit is at the stage, as the testing stage. We are taking a step not only towards metaverse development by connecting open stations with flights, but also moving towards a mobile first approach. So when I was telling you about this mobile approach, we, I seriously mean it, like we want to see module economy on the mobile as well. So the games that you will be playing on the mobile will also be connected to the mo module economy, which will be on the, the screen. You can see it on my screen right now. So you will be able to log in and you will be able to see all of your assets, all the resources that are part of your game, Xena, for example, in uh, Needum and some other games. And um, yeah, so initially not everything will be available on the phone, of course. Uh, for example, layout too, but we are moving in this direction and soon you will be able to access the metaverse from your pocket. Uh, additionally, the, the, we check the production board of Notion from time to time and uh, we, we basically make sure we adjust the information in Notion. So we want you to go and check it uh, as, uh, as soon as you can and try to check it on a weekly basis because we put a lot of changes and improvements and adjustments in this Notion to make sure that the information is transparent and it's coming directly from the game producer. So in the Notion, you will be able to see information about our development progress and additional unique content that will be added there occasionally. There you can learn not only about the main priorities and results from side sessions, but also when CNET withdrawals will be happening. CNET is a big thing and we want to make sure that withdrawals will be, will be available as soon as possible. But there are certain things that must be implemented for it to be functional. So we need to update on Cytos ID, how to secure assets and change your wallet. We have to uh, uh, restart the Hedonist tournament, Hedonism tournament. And we have to uh, develop what needs to be developed because we have a lot of uh, other things that must be developed within the module economy. And uh, you will be able to see in Notion what are the priorities, basically. So all of this information will be within the Notion. Yeah, you can go and check it yourself. It's all pretty easy to understand. Once again, we have a, um, a short roadmap that shows you what to expect the, until the mid of July, until the mid of and late August as well. So you can actually um, you can actually see it yourself. For for example, for CNAT, you can see it's later because we need to implement deposit and withdraw Ethereum BSC and linear networks. So this is a big thing that you know prevents us from uh, launching CNET withdrawals because CNET withdrawals will come with multi-chain withdrawals um, that you can choose from. So that's the big thing and we have to wait for it. Now, 
R&D department. R&D department, uh, you uh, already know that we have Cytus Maze, which is a new game coming from R&D department. We basically encounter, encounter difficulties during the prototype tests, and we realized that the gameplay was boring, linear, and uninteresting. A decision was made to change the approach to maze construction and game logic. The task is to create an interesting puzzle, not a linear walking game in terms of the gameplay feel. We are taking inspiration from the game like Bad North, right? So um, when when basically general testing is planned in a, about a one to one and a half months, the majority of the team is working on the project uh, on uh, the majority of the R&D team is working on this project right now. You can see the slide, what was before and what will be after. The old prototype and the, the new one, which will obviously, don't pay attention to the visuals and graphics, it will be improved, changed dramatically. This is just for the technical visual style pro, uh, purposes. The core objectives, and you can watch the video now as well in this uh, uh, side session while I'm actually describing the core mechanics. So the core objective remains the same unlock the creatures and manage oxygen. However, we are transitioning from a more flat running based approach to a focus on special puzzles and mazes, right? So that it's becoming a little bit more strategical, a little bit more interesting for you and um, slightly different to what uh, was in the previous version because it was a flat. Now we've got some um, different landscaping strategies as well that you have to pay attention to. Sidus in development, that's where the visuals come from. Like obviously what you saw before was just a technical draft. Here you see some uh, landscaping ideas and, and stuff like that. When it comes to mini games, R&D department is also working on that. Uh, we're currently changing um, Astrally and um, Cosmic Gears. So Cosmic Gears is currently getting a reworked towards the new version that you will be seeing in the Telegram application. And the Astrally will also be uh, part of the Telegram application launcher it was in the game game section basically yeah so what's next astral and cosmic gears will be back soon uh, tasks ahead reskin the visual part improve the gameplay tone station platform within three weeks that's when we are sort of estimating the, the new versions to uh, take a place on so you can watch the video now as well about the new reskinned uh, cosmic gears so uh, all the features from frank miller were removed they are now changed to uh, the new design in the video that you watch now, uh, yeah, it's looking a little bit more orientated towards Sidus lore. So hopefully you'll like it. Sidus uh, had a, uh, a decent launch with uh, Frank Miller, and now we are looking forward to make this game publicly uh, accessible so everyone can enjoy this game without buying this NFTs or whatever is required. So uh, the next slide that you will see, it's the game that is also in the development from the R&D department. It's called Space Sim. This is the code. Uh, basically, this is a code name for the space simulator. In the game, you will need to ensure the survival of the crew and the spaceship. The closest analogy is a space heaven. A lot of content is already ready. Mechanics are being considered. Uh, we'll start creating the prototype once the developers are free from Maze workload. So currently we have to finish Maze first and then we'll move to the next one. Space Sim is a, is a pretty cool game that I think will be interesting for you to look at. R&D department, once again, mid, mid late July, uh, we have Astral launch in Telegram, Cosmic Gears. We have August, the new Astral season launch in Cytus Maze testing. In October, we have Space Sim prototype. There will be a lot of interesting stuff for you to look at. That takes us to the next product. Um, so the product is called Ton Station. The product is launched along with our business partner from the Telegram side. Uh, we have already announced Bloom and a couple of other partners coming up soon. Before I get into the Ton Station, obviously I need to talk about the hype cycle, which is a, a very important factor for you to understand how the whole Telegram journey started, right? So Telegram was created a long time ago. It became popular because it's easy to use. It has a lot of different fun instruments and emojis and and uh, groups, creation processes, etc. So this is great as, you know, Telegram spaces, it has new ch news channels, it has everything you basically need, right? So that's why they've uh, managed to get to the stage when 900 million users join the Telegram and actively using it. I think 400 million people are using it on a daily uh, basis. So, which is a, an astonishing result. Um, and not so long ago, we saw um, Telegram launch Ton Network, which started very small, right? So it wasn't very popular network. And what we are seeing now is an exponential growth. Like Ton is growing towards top 10 CMC rating right now, and it's just rushing the records. The number of users, the TVL, the volumes, the liquidity is just, it's mind blowing, right? The progress is enormous. Then we saw um, 
an application like NodeCoin, right? Uh, NodeCoin didn't appear randomly. It was a, a logical outcome for a Tone Foundation to find a, a legit application that has a great number of use cases to bring the traffic, to bring the mass adoption by use case. And um, they've supported it. What they've done was an extremely good job. Like, I mean, NodeCoin brought more than 40 million users from different parts of the world. Many of these users are actually not coming from crypto space. They are just, you know, normal people living normal lives and they have no idea what crypto is so many of them just came from outside world let's put it this way and um, it showed the world that you know telegram is not just a place for fun but it's also a great uh, source of traffic and uh, that's how we saw a massive adoption of tap to earn applications that's how we saw uh, balloon uh, with 20 million uh, now it's actually 30 million users appeared in the market and did extremely good job and this is one of our business partners we work with Bloom. and uh, then we saw a uh, hamster combat such a simple uh, tap to earn game but it's already 200 million users playing this game and uh, it's an astonishing result so ton station is a logical um, outcome of the entire situation in the market because ton station is solving a big problem it actually has a, a clear use case for people to stay within the telegram without leaving the telegram application because besides the rewards and incentives as a large number of games that will be published there and a, a very easy to use aggregation platform which basically means in one place you will be able to click all of your rewards from all of your clickers and play the games and chat to your friends without leaving the application as well as getting some rewards and, and bringing some family friends via the referral system so ton station is the web free a uh, game aggregator which will be listing some top quality games. Uh, not so long ago, we've launched a game called Top Wars. This game is already generating hundreds and millions of users, but now it's available in Telegram. Nobody, and this is a matter of fact, nobody's ever launched this game in Telegram and we were able to integrate it within the Telegram and you can you know, smoothly enjoy the gameplay right now and, and join you know, millions of players are actually playing Top Wars right now. So Ton Station is going to solve a lot of different issues when it comes to the game experience because we are professional game developers and we work with the best in Telegram space when it comes to the development. So we do believe there will be a big future for Ton Station. How does it actually benefit Sardis? Well, it's a very simple answer. If you have a you know tens and millions of users at the Ton Station and you promote Sardis Heroes products and games, you know what's going to happen. These people will start joining the games, enjoy the fun, enjoy the gameplay experience, start to um, spend you know their crypto rewards onto the assets of Sardis. And here we go. We've got some action going on, some uh, nice liquidity flowing in, and a number of users are starting to enjoy the entire experience of Sardis ecosystem and the Sardis metaverse. So this is a, a great traffic uh, for many of us, and we have to use it wisely while there is a, a a big trend in telegram we should definitely take an advantage of that and uh, work with the telegram technology very closely to make sure that we can actually bring a big benefit to the to the telegram ecosystem and show the world that telegram is a great platform not just for chatting and talking and uh you know news channels but it's also fun for telegram gaming this is what we're basically going to do along with our partners so we are looking forward to it and uh, we are welcoming you to join the ton station and uh, watch the progress happening there butler will be a part of ton station will be listed there as well so i'm sure hundreds and thousands of players will definitely enjoy butler and they will be able to join the module economy and many other things as well so what can the application do? You know, you can farm Zoom tokens, which is a reward token within this uh, Ton Station platform uh, created by the business partners of Telegram and uh, Cytus. Uh, collect rewards uh, from different platforms, from games and from um, Ton Station itself. Compete in tournaments, teach our um, system how it actually works and educate people in Telegram how to enjoy gaming, learn um, how to win, to win quests. Uh, obviously, there will be a lot of tips and educational videos explaining how the Telegram gaming work, what can be done in Telegram, where the opportunities are, uh, what are the available mini applications in, in Telegram, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So Tone Station is something unique, and uh, we do believe that there is a big future, bright future for Telegram ecosystem, and Cytos will take a big part in it, indeed. So we are looking forward to welcome all of you guys, join the Tone Station before anyone else. Uh, we have a large number of users already, hundreds and thousands of people are joining our application. There is a reason why Bloom and other business partners are working with us because they see a big future in the gaming space and they see a big future of game applications within the Telegram. So we welcome all of you to join the Ton Station. Ton Station will be a great platform for different gaming experiences. Um, Sidus will be a big part of it and uh, we are looking forward to welcome all of you guys. Make sure you join in before it's too late and uh, enjoy the process. Uh, to sum it up, we have a lot of great processes happening right now 
different game products are developed by different teams. The organization of Saudis is well structured right now. Uh, we're paying a lot of attention to your feedback. We are thanking you for all of your feedback and appreciating all of your participation in our product and the support. I understand things are not as smooth as we all want it, but uh, this is a startup. This is what you have to expect from the startup. Things go up and down, but in the end of the day, if things are solved and fixed, that should make all of us happy. Um, so we are happy that we were able to uh, put ourselves all together and restructure our business to make it a little bit more efficient. So thank you so much for all of your support, guys. We once again, thank you for your participation, for all of your testings. We are looking forward to share these products once they will be available for you so you can test them and uh, do not miss out. Like um, Sidus is in the middle of a big hype around gaming. Do not sleep, gaming will be massive. No matter what people say, gaming is a natural utility you don't need to sell it you don't need to go around and shout out around it and scream join gaming gaming will bring people naturally and this is will be happening very nicely and smoothly uh, by many different applications in that free space and Sidus is one of them so uh, join in before it's not too late thank you so much for your time today and uh, enjoy the rest of your day take care bye bye